Hi, welcome back to a new video. This will also be one of my last videos for 2021. It's one of my unfinished projects, which I definitely have to finish because this is one of the remaining flood victim PCs we didn't have time to finish. We were in contact with him like mid-November and discussed that I'm going to offer him an upgrade from C390 to C690. And we are going to replace his 9900K with a 12600K which will be definitely the, the quicker CPU for any kind of gaming scenario and also be a better replacement board like new technologies uh, with PCI Express 5 and everything. It should be the better platform, like a base platform for the future. But the remaining missing component we didn't test and clean so far is still the GPU, which you can see on my table. I still have to check if this is still working. I hope it is still working because this has to be inside his new PC. Even though this happened many months ago, for whatever reason, the card is still smelling not in a nice way. Just found out while I tried to like blow off some of this, what it looks like, what looks like dust, but it's not dust. This is really sticking quite a lot to this. Uh, it should be a 2080 Ti or non-Ti Aros RTX Water Force. This will be a lot of work to clean the radiator and the card. I think the easiest will be just to completely tear it apart into the tiniest components and then clean every single bit. The good thing is the front side of the car seems to be okay. Doesn't seem to be a lot of dirt underneath like the GPU and the memories. I think that should be fairly easy to clean. But the cooling block itself looks really nasty. Let's take a quick look underneath the back plate. Mm. The thing is technically these pads are still in a very good condition. You can see they're still soft, a bit sticky. A bit sticky is also a bit of a problem because you can see a lot of this like dust and dirt is still stuck to the pads and no matter how we would try to clean these pads it would still be stuck to the pads. So that's something we cannot replace. Well, that's something we can clean but we can replace them, that should be no issue. On the back plate though, we have this part of the RGB, which I definitely want to re remove. Otherwise, yeah, it's just one more piece I have to dry, but I'm not sure if the LED strips are that dirty, so it might just be that I'm not going to clean them. And now I also figured out how this was assembled, which means that we're just going to clean everything. The most critical part about cleaning this VGA will be the entire cooling unit. Not only because there are also some mechanical parts involved, like the pump itself, but also like we have all this textile stuff around here. So that will make it a lot more complicated for the cleaning process itself. And I also fear that we have to open the entire pump to make sure that there are no residues inside. It's been two days since we started cleaning our GPU. Well, the card itself, the PCB, the GPU, all of this is very simple to clean. It hasn't been that dirty anyway, so that shouldn't be any kind of issue. We cleaned it with water and then also cleaned it with alcohol even further, which worked out totally fine because even after the process of first cleaning it with some dish soap and water, then um, completely um, submerged this in alcohol, 
you can just heat it up to like 120 degrees Celsius in the oven and then you can be sure that any kind of fluid will be gone like underneath the GPU, underneath the memories. That is very simple for the card. Same procedure basically for like the backplate and the RGB strips and everything. So that is all pretty simple. The only thing which is very annoying is the entire AIO GPU cooling block thing. Mainly because Gigabyte decided to use some screws on this cooling block which cannot be opened. There are these types of screws where you use your screwdriver that you cannot get any grip. These screws can only be used once for the mounting process but they cannot be opened anymore. Which is very annoying. I kind of understand why they use these screws because they don't want people to accidentally open the GPU cooling block. Let's say you're trying to replace thermal paste, thermal pads. They want to prevent that you're accidentally opening the block because that would mean that you would, yeah, you would have some water dro dropping out, you would have air inside, which is definitely not great. But for our cleaning purpose, that's also very annoying. That's why I decided to first soak the entire thing in water and soap. I had to do this to mainly get all the dirt out of the radiator. That was a lot of work. And then we still had the issue with the pump because we couldn't like separate the pump from the rest. And that's especially a problem because I first, as I said before, submerged this in water and uh, soap to clean it like from the raw dirt and then completely submerged it in alcohol. That's the typical cleaning process. And afterwards, like I did for example with the GPU, you would typically heat this up to like 120 degrees Celsius to make sure that any kind of fluid is gone, which you cannot do with a closed liquid cooler. Obviously, otherwise you would have pressure building up. Seems like this was too boring for Chic. But you could have pressure building up, which means that your radiator might explode. That's why I'm not 100% sure that everything of the liquid is gone. I'm sure that the GPU will survive, that should be no issue. I don't see any reason why this should be damaged. But for the pump and like all the circuits and stuff inside there, not so sure. I will reassemble everything, put new thermal paste, new pads and everything on there. And then we will find out if it's still alive. Almost done with adding paste and pads to the card, only missing the inductors right now. Just wanted to point out the screws once more, so you know what I was talking about. These types of screws can only be tightened, but you cannot open these. Very curious if the card is still alive. We will find out in a few seconds. I decided not to fully assemble the card because I still want to test it first if everything is running fine or not. Left the cover away for this reason. And I'm now assembling the bundle, which we're going to put inside his rig. Uh, because we're going to use this for our testing as well. This is the Samsung NVMe drive we rescued from his system back then. He's getting 32 gigabyte DDR5 memory and 1200K. Of course, the Aros C690 Pro as a motherboard. The system is fully assembled now. I'm very curious if the GPU is alive or not. I'm not sure if you could just hear this, but I could definitely hear a lot of flow going through there, like some air going through the pump, which is a great sign, so the pump is at least alive. Amazing. Car is working. Well, system just powered off, but I think the car is fine. It just seems like his OS has some kind of issue. Since I'm not 100% sure what was going on with his drive, I decided to simply place a second drive inside his system. He just got a Viper 2TB Gen 4 NVMe drive in addition because his main drive was also only 250GB in capacity, which is not that much anymore now nowadays. So he can just access the data on his drive as a second device and then use the 2TB as main drive. I'm very happy with our cleaning result, even though it will never look identical to like the factory state. You can see there's a little bit of rust on the screws, for example, but I think this is absolutely fine. Considering how it looked before, I mean, before we didn't even see that this is a window. I couldn't even look inside. So that's nice. And now I will throw all of these components inside a case. I decided to try the H510 Flow from NZXT for this build. That's also the reason why I decided to go for a CPU air cooler instead to go for like an AIO. But we're also just using a 12600K, which has a very low power consumption, at least in gaming. It's typically somewhere between 60 and 80 watt TDP, which is, I mean, that's totally fine for any kind of air cooler like this. And also we will have perfect um, air intake for our AIO cooled graphics card from the front. I decided to get some some Fantex T30 fans, which would be great. 
performing and also great noise level for our cart for the cooling. I'm not sure if I will put another fan in the back, probably not. Might add one on the top, but from my experience, if a fan is very close to an air cooler like this, it's creating more noise than it actually helps for cooling. For this build, I'm using a Focus PX 850W PSU, should be absolutely sufficient for this type of build. And also, Seasonic, thank you very much for supporting this video project with the sample. And also, thank you very much to NZXT for providing the case sample. Unfortunately, I could not place the T30 fans in top as exhaust. It's colliding with the VRM heatsink and also some part of the cable back there. So that's not going to work out. That's why I decided to still use the fan right here. I will later check if this will be fine or not. I am very happy and satisfied with this PC build because you cannot hear anything. This is exactly how I imagined this build. Just perfect combination with the fans as front intake CPU air cooler just serves perfectly well for 12600K. The AIO cooled 2080 Ti and I've been running 3D mic in a loop test for five times already. So this is pretty much gaming temperature. That's awesome. And because the fan speed on the exhaust fan in the back is so low, it doesn't really produce any kind of noise. So that's great. I set GPU-Z to read out the max reach temperature, GPU temperature just below 60 degrees Celsius, hotspot below 80, that is exactly how it should be. The system passed another 30 minutes of stability test, since all the components are running stock, I don't think it's necessary to do like extensive Prime95 testing or something like that. I'm just running R20 in the background right now to show you some like power consumption and temperature numbers. As you can see, package power is about 140 watt max. And at this power consumption, we have not even 80 degrees Celsius on the course. It also shows that not every single time you have to have an AIO cooling unit for a CPU like a 12600K, a good air cooling unit is absolutely sufficient. And there is still plenty of headroom, like 15 or even 20 degrees Celsius of headroom for overclocking, which equals easily 200 megahertz if you wanted to. The rest of the temperatures also looks very cold. 47 degrees Celsius peak on a PCH, VRM peaked out at 63 degrees Celsius. So everything is absolutely in the green zone. The system turned out very nice, I think. The H510 flow is a good case if you don't have that much space. There are some limitations, for example, with the top exhaust fan, we couldn't mount the T30 because it's a rather thick fan. If you would mount a slim fan, it would definitely work, but then also only 120 millimeter fan. A 140 would already collide with the components in the back, which would mean that NZXT would have to adjust the position of the top exhaust a bit more towards the front panel, which also leads to the fact that it will not be centered anymore. Won't be as appealing visually, but that's the only way you can probably bypass this considering that it's a very tiny case. I wish they would also make this for the H710 because the flow version is definitely great because you cannot really hear anything. The system is running right now. It's a very good noise level. Doesn't have that much RGB, but I think it just looks very nice. This will be my last video for this year, at least production wise. We already produced two or three more videos for you to watch because I will be on vacation for two weeks. It's the first time taking more than one day off in almost two years. And uh, I actually had some health issues in the last weeks, which slowed me down on some of the projects. I wanted to do a lot more stuff um, in December and also end of November, but I uh, couldn't do it. The doctor said I definitely have to take time off and that's what I will do. So I will take two weeks of vacation. You probably will not notice because as I said before, we already produced some videos for you to watch. I just wanted to thank you for your great support in uh, 2021, especially because we split up the English channel and I'm very glad that the English channel is growing so fast because I was initially a bit afraid that if we just split it up that I will lose kind of momentum from the German channel to the English one that some English viewer might not find to transition over to the English one, but everything wor worked out fine. Just wanted to thank you for that. And I hope you will have a nice Christmas time and also a great start in the new year. Thank you for the support and see you next year. Bye bye.